Uh, okay, um, last week we talked about the ascendancy of God or the unknowledgeableness of God, God being distant from us, uh, and yet uh, Jesus came that we might know something about him. So uh, this is a, 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 an addition to that uh, in the sense of uh, this is eternal life that we may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I, uh, this is not going to go, go well and this may happen with a few slides. Uh, that should be slide three, I think. No, it's not. Oh, bonus, okay. That's going to be the slide three, that's where it is. Football but, team. But now we've seen a mirror dimly, but then face to face, and now we know in part, now we'll know fully just to have you fully known. Mm. We use that passage quite a lot, and, and I still struggle with the context of that, because uh, some of the context to me seems that's to do with the, uh, the, the word being revealed uh, after the apostles moved on type of thing. Uh, and so, but there's a reality in there. The more that we know the Word of God, the more we come to terms with who Jesus is and can see Jesus more clearly, and through Jesus we can see God more clearly. So every time I use that passage, I'm, it's always that's a good word, it's ambivalent. Ooh. Put that one in your dictionary, uh, Danny. Yeah. That's ambivalent, okay. But here's the, uh, some of the attributes of God. Ambivalent. Good word. Um, it's, I'm not too sure about it, it you know. Uh, I like to use it, but I've said, I'm just a word. Yeah, I know it's a word, but that's not the right meaning. Anymore. Well, no, that's, that's my feeling. I am ambivalent about how I use that passage. Yeah, it's a yeah. Yeah. that's exactly what, yeah, okay. Anyway, so this chart here, you'll yeah, see, uh, I've, got, I've got about six to eight of these charts. A butter. And, uh, Roger, what? I've got six to eight of these charts, and, uh, uh, each one of them highlight different aspects of the eternal nature of God, okay? So, as we're going through these different lessons, we're going to see some of these uh, a turn up. So, we've got transcendence, and basically, this, is, uh, this particular lesson, we're going to be with the imminence, uh, deal with transcendence, God being outside of everything, and yet we can know Him. Uh, imminent, near, present, God is active, God has demonstrated Himself active in creation. And so we can, when we, when we even look at the midnight skies, we can identify with the, the, the wonder of creation. And some days, in some situations, you're drawn closer to God. When you spend time um, out in nature, uh, or some beautiful parts of the, the uh, coast, uh, and uh, some special days when <coughs> they, they just the wind's just right, and the waves are just right, and the sky's just right, and you think, wow, you know. Mm. Amazing, and and you just feel better about yourself, and you feel better about the God you have a relationship with. Uh, there's something about certain situations that can draw you closer to God, uh, but ultimately it's in Jesus where we are drawn really close to Him. Thus says the the high and exalted One who lives forever. His name is holy, and that's another one we're we'll deal with about an aspect of God later on. Uh, God is. I, even though he is uh, outside of our knowledge in the sense we can't pin him down exactly, he has revealed certain aspects of him. And uh, his high and exalted nature uh, is also a, a, a holy God. So I dwell in a high and holy place and also with a contrite and lowly of spirit, uh, in order to revive the spirit of the lowly, to revive the heart of the contrite. So God's, God, one of the God's purposes is to deal with us, to help us to appreciate that yes, sometimes we're really uh, not worth the effort to put it out that way, and yet he thinks we're worth the effort. That's an that's a important thing. Here's the God of the universe who could so easily turn his back on us, uh, and especially in some of the th messes we get ourselves into, and yet he, he says, look, I'm not, go I'm not going to turn my back on you. I'm going to try and be there for you. I'm going to try and keep reaching out for you until you decide, you decide to totally turn me away. That's an interesting aspect. Uh, God doesn't don't, God doesn't give up on us lightly. And uh, <clears throat> Acts 17 uh, is a beautiful passage. Uh, they who would seek God, if perhaps might grope for him and find him, though he's not far from each of us. If in him we live and move and have our very being, the authorized version says, and even some of your own poets have said, for we also are his children. You know, some days we feel inadequate, some days we feel so desperate in some situations, 
that we think, you know, God's, God's left me. He's, 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 I'm all alone. Nobody cares about me. And yet, the reality is that in every experience of life, God is near. God is uh, there. And if He didn't care about us, we wouldn't, it wouldn't exist. In Him we live and move and have our very being. That's beautiful stuff, really. Powerful stuff. And it's, uh, you know, when we're having doubts, when we're having fears, when we're struggling with something, we need to be drawn to passages like this that remind us <coughs> if we feel far away from God, it's not because He's moved, it's because we've moved. And we need to uh, put that back into uh, our lives and perspective. So, how does the transcendent, the separate God become the imminent, the near God? Uh, obviously, in His self-revelation of Himself, primarily in creation. The psalmist, in some beautiful psalms, expresses this awesomeness and says this wonder uh, and this is one of the one of the ones 19 verse 1 to 6 the heavens are telling of the glory of god mm -hmm. the expanse is declaring the work of his hands day to day pours forth speech night to night reveals knowledge there is no speech no other words their voice, voice is not heard right. their life line has gone out through all the earth their utterances to the end of the world in them he has placed a tent for the sun which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, it rejoices as a strong man that runs his course. It's rising it's from one end of the heavens, it's circuit to the other end of them. There is nothing hidden from its feet. You know, when you see that sun just come out to the, uh, uh, especially that beautiful, beautiful quiet morning, and uh, it's just awesome power, uh, and as the light just uh, fills the world, uh, it's beautiful. I often, uh, if you ever get the opportunity to go to the Lake District or somewhere like that, uh, and you, you can get a chance to get up high enough to see a loads and loads of hills out in front of you. And you see the sun coming up. And it just, the darkness, the shadows just dash away. They're, they're almost like obliterated by the awesome power of the light of the sun. And I never, you know, it's especially a harvest moon. Uh, some different times in the winter time, a crisp cold night. <clears throat> and everything's uh, bright and brilliant and the, and the moon's just out there. And you think, the moon's not even light. The moon is just a reflection of the sun. Awesome power mm -hmm. and majesty mm -hmm. there to give us light that night. You know, God is a, a truly an awesome God. And the, the power to sustain, he talks about sustaining the universe by the water of his power. He keeps it all running. He keeps it all moving. He keeps it all motioning. <clears throat> Romans 1 verse 20, Paul says much the same thing. Since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power, his divine nature, have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made, so that they are without excuse. You know, when you, a lot of people in our society, they, they may laugh at God, they may, they may say there is no God, but at certain times of their life, they've got to admit there's got to be something, and that's you know that's that's just the reality of it. When they cast aside all the stuff that clouds their eyes uh, and they're made to actually stop and look at the awesomeness of the universe in which we live. There's got to be something. Anybody see the news report that uh, in Northumbria, the Kielder yes. Dam, they declared it to be a World Heritage yes. Centre for the blackness of the sky. Yeah. So you can stand the, there and you can see more naked, clearly. With the no naked, light you can see the Milky Way with the naked eye. Yeah. There you can count 3,000 stars. Yeah. Under normal circumstances, perhaps 200 down here. Yeah. But it, it, that's we, we, we're living in light, continual light pollution. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, you know, it, it makes it difficult to see. But yeah, there are certain places where. Uh, when this I is the best in the world, <coughs> actually. But when, all of us, all of us who are probably over, over 50 can remember the days of our childhood when you were walking, I don't know, if, if you weren't living in a town, especially, mm, you were yeah. in the countryside somewhere, and you went for a walk uh, from A to B at night, no, it was dark, you mm. couldn't see your hand in front of you, it was like being there in a pit, really, that's, that was real darkness. And you don't, don't get that now, because most of the places we walk, most of the places we go, you'll see that there's a light somewhere. Even if it's just the, the floodlights from a football stadium, you know, even 20 miles away, lighting up the sky. 
You just don't get that. That, that darkness that uh, you remember when you were when you were young. These young guys today don't realise that, do they? You know? That's true. Yeah. Hey, uh, oops. I go back there. Yeah? Corby Council's trying to improve on that. Yeah, trying to help. Yeah. Trying to help you appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 break their legs. Yeah. For us to try <laughs> that, it? Yeah. 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 So things so which I have not seen and ear have not heard, which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love Him. One of the great promises of God, you know. Um, <coughs> sometimes we just we forget. We don't see the end, the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm. For to us, God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit set us all things, even the depths of God. Things which eye hath not seen, ear has not heard, hasn't even entered the heart of man. All that God has prepared for those who love Him. When we talk about heaven, when we talk about eternal life, we, we just, we, we haven't even got a glimpse, the edge of the garment, <coughs> but what? Uh, he has prepared each one of us. You know, they still never to go near the light at the end of the tunnel. No. <laughs> <laughs> but who, men, who among if men you knows? What I mean. Yes. Who among men knows the thoughts of man except the spirit of man which is in him? Even though the thoughts of God, no one knows except the spirit of God. Communication. God has got to communicate before we can <clears> understand <throat> who He is. Now we receive not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God, which things we also speak, not in words taught in human wisdom, but in those taught by the spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Okay? It's a, it's a, a different dimension, a spiritual dimension we live in. We recognize that which a lot of people don't recognize. There's a difference uh, in, in the world in which we live. It's a bit like, uh, you know, the, if you put a light, white light through a prism. If you don't see white, if you just see the white light, you don't realize that inside that white light there are all the beautiful colors. You know? And, and a lot of people are walking along and they think this is it. This is all there is. This is the light that they see. And they don't see what we've had our eyes open to see through Christ. Then there's a, a, a spiritual spectrum out there. Uh, you know, uh, we, we can we can become arrogant. You know, we can we can say, well, we know something you don't know. We know a, we've got a spiritual dimension, and you're too thick to see it. Mm -hmm. you've got but, a mm -hmm. Well, the problem is, I mean, everybody's ignorant. You know, even Frank is ignorant of something. Of something. Yeah, uh, would you admit, Frank, of some things you don't know? But I do, I do know that that actually that passage applies to the apostolic inspiration. This it's one, talking yes. about the apostles. That's right. Okay, um, but but he, he, that's passed on to we we have the words of the Lord passed on. Yeah, that's a result of the revelation. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, everybody's ignorant of some things. So sometimes we shouldn't be too hard on some people just because they can't see what we can see, uh, because we're fortunate enough to have our eyes open. When you think of your own Christian walk and, and how long it sometimes takes some things mm -hmm. to penetrate, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. There's, there's been some occasions where, you know, someone's gone up and, and, and preached the gospel and you almost, well, you do feel moved to go up and be baptised because way, way back then you didn't have the full knowledge of what's going on now. You begin to question yourself, you know, yeah. crikey, I, I, I didn't, you know, didn't realise. And then, yeah, you get, you get deeper into it, but then again, you, you yeah. understand that God takes you as you are at that moment in time. That's right. Then you start to learn. It's a bit like me with an apple pie, you know, with that, that spoonful. Yeah. You know, you think, this, this is good, but I didn't realize just how good. So you, you need a couple more spoonfuls to yeah. <laughs> allow that deeper revelation to take place. Mm -hmm. That's the same with God in the Bible. Uh, you know, we, 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 it takes us a long we'll taste time. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You taste and see the Lord is good on, yeah. Okay. Like, um, when you get married. It's not until after you know her. <laughs> well, what have I done? Uh, well, you see, yeah. love is blind, but marriage is an eye opener. Yes, yes. The nice way to put that is it, it, when you first get married, you're in love. Oh, right. But after a longer time, period of time, then you really understand what love is. Oh, right. So, there's, you know, yeah. and it's the yeah. same with our relationship with God. We, 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 we begin a, a walk with God, but we don't really know. Uh, well, practically anything really of what God wants us to know. 
and understand. That's, that's really, it's the, as, you, as you walk closer and the longer you walk with them, hopefully, the more you know. So, uh, that's true because eventually you get to the point where you know almost instinctively what a passage means. Yes. Because you've entered into the spirit of the thing. You, you, you understand. Know, the spirit of the mind, the, the mind of the spirit. And, and, and another element to that as well, because uh, uh, when you first look at some passages, you look at them in the immediate context, because you go to option, you yes, don't right. know the wider context. Yes. And so you can, you can think, oh, I, I know what that means. Yes. But then as you continue to read further and you read wider, you realize, wow, that means a lot more than I thought of it. And sometimes you got it wrong the first time, mm -hmm. because you didn't have the wider knowledge to, right. to, to draw on. But hopefully the longer you walk with God and the more often you read it, uh, the more familiar you are with it, then the, the, the Spirit will use that to, to help you discern the stuff that's right and the stuff that's wrong and mm -hmm. deepen that knowledge and awareness, mm -hmm. which is all about. He reveals the mysteries from the darkness and brings the deep darkness into light, the, the Job says. And Job is one of the oldest books in the Bible, in a, in a period. Yeah. <clears throat> Surely, Amos says, surely the Lord does nothing unless he reveals his secret counsel to his servants and prophets. All the way through the Old Testament, God was constantly helping individuals to tell other people what God was thinking about, what God was like, what God wanted of their lives. And the sad thing is, his own people, what did they do to the prophets? Nine times out of ten, they stoned them. They wouldn't listen to him. They turned their backs on him. They treated him like that. And these are God's spokesmen. For the thing Jesus later on, and 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 uh, and talking about the harsh treatment that he was going to get from the from the, um, the Pharisees and people like that, he says, you know, the thing you're going to treat you any different? We who are his followers, or the apostles, and we who are his followers, if we if we stand up for Christ, uh, they might end up doing to us what they did to Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know, it could get that way, giving a, a cost to our life. But have, the gospel. haven't they got the adversary that, that, oh, yeah. that enables the old, them to... The old Satan's in, in there, you know, helping out, isn't he? Yeah. To bring us there. And, and when you're a Christian, that means that doesn't mean you're immune from Satan. It means you become a target. Mm. You know, before you already had you, so he wasn't worried about you. But now you're a Christian, one of them, he's after you, and he wants to bring you down. He wants to take you away from it. He wants to take you away from it, yeah. yeah. He lives hard with the heart yeah. when you've got friends. Who tried to make you doubt? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. He said you can't believe that. That's right. No. And and and, 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 and the, the other know. thing they do, the other thing they do is, is uh, right. they they look for the things in your life oh, that they can use against you. Yeah, that's not very Christian, is it? That's no. it. Oh, you hear that all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there are many people who envy what you've got, though, too. Yes, well, some, some, some not yes. Huh? Yeah. Not sometimes, some, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they do, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, I mean, there's a little story, I'll tell you this. Herbert Spencer, who was regarded as Darwin's bulldog, he defended him. He was at a country house for a weekend with a whole lot of guests. Some came around, and most of the guests went to church. And one man, and Spencer said to one man, he said, don't go to church, just, just stay behind. And tell me why you, you believe in Jesus Christ. And he did that. And when he'd finished, this is quite true, Spencer said, you know, I'd give my right arm to be able to believe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And still yeah. 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 I mean, he was really the power behind Charles Darwin. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Second Corinthians 4, verse 7 says, We have this treasure in mm -hmm. earthen vessels. So we are the earthen vessels. Mm. And, and God says the things you see revealed through Christ for us is a treasure. That reminds you of some of the parables that Jesus said, you know, the, the parable of the, of the, the lost coin, the parable of the, the pearl. It, it's a treasure. Mm. Uh, and, and, and do we really value it? You know, it, our Bibles, how often do they come, uh, become door, door stops mm. or, 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 or just collecting dust on the shelf and, instead of, you know, valued. We, we are really in a privileged position. Uh, we've got access to so much information uh, today, religious information mm. today, that they didn't have 150, 200 years ago. And that's not even talking about the scientific information. No, that's in there. and it's just, it's mm. just uh, uh, because it's there, we've begun to take it for granted. You know, uh, Frank had 39 Bibles on his shelf one time. 
I've got more than that in my computer. Uh, but you know, uh, uh, do we really value the access we have to the the Word of God now that, that they didn't have a few years ago? I, I'm always amazed. I really am amazed when they pick up some of these books off the shelf, written in 1870 or 1840 or something, 600 pages thick, and beautifully thought through and and, and portrayed. Uh, and you got like a concordance. Um, Strong's Concordance. They might have work. <laughs> they went into that thing. Any of the concordance, even Crudence, the crude, yeah. drove him nuts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he ended up in a, in a mental institute. Yeah. <laughs> Just the, the, the detail and the, and the amount of times, no computer, no spell checker, after all that written out by hand. Mm. Absolutely amazing. And, you know, we just oh, put it back to the shelf. Crazy. Mm. Really, we don't well, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. We need to value the salvation that we have and the relationship that we have and the opportunity we have to to uh, access the Word of God. Psalm 118 says, No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten God. That's an interesting translation. Mm -hmm. uh, the only begotten, that is Jesus, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has explained him. Uh, are those other passages? Have you seen me? Have you seen the Father? Mm -hmm. uh, John 14, 7. If you had known me, you would know my Father also. For now do you know him and have seen him. Philip says, uh, show me the Father, and it is enough for us. You, yeah, like you can imagine as a, a real... Uh, there's a real irony in the scripture sometimes. And, and Jesus has got a great sense of humor is also, also comes through. Jesus says, you can always see him shaking his head. Have I been with you so long? You want to see the Father? Have I been with you so long and you haven't come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Mm. These apostles, sometimes when you read them, they're sick as two plants, aren't they? <laughs> Well, oh, could we have been any different, I wonder? And that's, that was exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> we sometimes look at and think, they're with Jesus, the best teacher you can ever imagine, to, to, to show God, to demonstrate God. And they were, they were stumbling over it, they were stick of two planks. And yet, you know, we, we've, got it, we've got it laid out for us, mm. and we still make a mess of it. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, well, mega belief. They were ordinary people, and they, were, they didn't fully understand That's the, right. uh, the gravity. And, and Jesus the says that uh, a bit later on. He says, "You know, I, I, I could tell you loads, I, I, loads. I want to tell you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just <coughs> you're not ready for it. You can't take it in. You know, brain mm -hmm. overload. Uh, because the stuff that he had to share was just too much for them to, from the background, from the culture, from the history, to just grasp." You know, and yet we, uh, uh, this is one of the big problems we have. If you actually meet somebody who actually wants to know about Jesus, uh, and, and, and wants to, you have to talk to him about Jesus, and in 10 minutes we kind of dump the whole Genesis to Revelation on them, mm -hmm. and, and then we look at it and they go, they go okay, and they stagger away, and they oh, they never come back to talk to me, what happened there? Yeah. And we overload them. I had, I had that actually happened to me with a friend of mine, John. Uh, Oh, his name's his second name's gone now. Uh, anyway, he said, uh, I, I, John, I was, I was reading um, about this man who, who lived to um, 700 years old. Was it 700 or 800 years old? So 900. Nine Methuselah. Yeah, or whoever he really was. He said, oh, well, I just closed the book after that because uh -huh. nobody, nobody lives to that. Couldn't age. shake it in. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. No end of people that I, and, and my looking back in my lifetime, which, you know, it's so few times you actually get somebody who's really interested mm. and, and, and you think, oh, what, you know, here, I've got you, go and nail it. Yes. Yeah. Oh, dear. You yeah. can't get it all out anyway. No. You want to see it. There isn't time enough. Uh, Edith Stewart was a better one. She was the one. She was like a, she was like a, a fisherman with a, with a, a, a you know, a little bit. Fisherman. Yeah. A little. And, and yeah, <laughs> just tease you and tease you. And wouldn't tell you too much. You say, hey, what, what, what else? Oh, you know, just think about that. Mm -hmm. Come back. I want to know more. I want to know more. I want to know more. When we finished, fell out of people. I want to know less. I want to know yeah. less. I want to know less. It's amazing. I've never had anybody ask me, and if I speak to them, they seem to avoid me after that. Yeah, yeah. Is that mm -hmm. religious not? 
Okay. That's weird that I'll just sit there thinking that's weird because when you were talking to me, you only drip fed me little bits and bobs and pieces. Ah, uh, that was ages ago. Mm. Right. I, I would overload you now. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> that, time, that time down the tip. Yeah. <laughs> and I, you, I, you said to me, what are you doing? I said, oh, I've got um, laid off from the steelworks. Absolutely terrible. And you told me that you were doing things for students. I what's that all about? And he says, oh, with the Church of Christ. And, uh, and when, I began, when I began to realise that this is something to do with uh, religion, I, start, I did actually feel like I'm backing off from you. Yeah. I, I don't know what that is, you know, that's... Just that's the old man, I suppose. It's, I, don't, it's, I don't think it's always that. I think that sometimes they don't want to make a commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They realise that if they, if they get to know... Too much. Too much. They'll be faced with a decision to mm. make it. They don't want to make it. Well, that, that's all right, morally speaking. But I was between a rock and a hard place, out of work with two kids and nappies, yeah, yeah. and I didn't want religion. Well, that's it. Do you know what I mean? But two weeks prior to that, I forgot that I actually prayed in my bedroom to for Jesus to come into my life because I watched this television program, yeah. and nothing happened <laughs> until four night on with a bloody. Jesus takes his time out. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yes. It's, it is, it's difficult. We, yeah. we, we so seldom meet somebody who's really interested and excited about talking about it that if we do get the opportunity, then it kind of overloads them it's really too right. much. And, and I, and, you know, I think often in my life, and sometimes it takes take me two years to get something, to understand something. You know, a, a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit, and then mm. suddenly the penny drops, suddenly the penny drops. <laughs> But because we see it so clearly, we sometimes are impatient when we talk to other people. Because they think, well, I've told you, you know, why can't you see that? Mm. We back them into a corner, though. Yes, often. Polarise people, yeah. threaten people. Well, not, you know, physically, but mm. certainly they, they, uh, they, they, they can be threatened by two people. I think that's true if you're dealing with Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. You tend to want to beat them about the head with the Bible. That's not good. You want to prove that they're wrong. Well, that's, what they're trying well, that's to a mistake, yeah. though, really. Yeah. I, I, I did that about three weeks ago. I was down in my sister's house, and these two, two Joe's witnesses came. And one was young, the other one was older. And I realised I couldn't do anything with the older one, but I thought with the younger one, um, we, we were, I, I, I did, did my usual type of deal. And about three weeks later, the Joe's witnesses were going round the same place again. And I had just pulled up in a car, and and saw him coming down towards the house, and I said, you know, you went, uh, are you going to knock here? He said, no. Mm. And walked past. <laughs> and went next door. Well, I had that experience Black just Black about three Black weeks ago. Black 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 <laughs> I had that experience about three weeks ago when a man and a, a young girl came to the door. Oh, we said, we met before, haven't we? I said, yes, we have. And we talked. I was so very, very nice to them, very nice indeed, but I addressed my remarks to the girl. He yeah. said, I said, I'm a Christian. Just a Christian, you know, and they're, they're not accustomed to being treated. They expect to be persecuted. Yeah. They want to be persecuted. So it's, yeah. Yeah. And if yeah. someone is nice to them, that's not according to the book. No. Okay. Yeah. So when we people people talk to us, hopefully we'll be able to show them the Father, yeah. like Jesus said. You know, mm. by what we say and what we do. But it's, some some lessons take a lot of learning. That's the problem. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. That firstborn of all creation isn't, isn't ideal uh, because he wasn't the first created being, mm -hmm. but he's the origin of all creation. That would be a better translation of that. Um, God, after he spoke a long time ago to the fathers by the prophets in many portions, many ways, in these last days has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom, whom also he made the world. That's that's, mm. that's big, big statements that yeah. you know we could, we could spend all that a fortnight just doing that one gosh but it, it's beautiful stuff Jesus came to demonstrate who God was and what God was God's God of love he cares about his creation uh, beautiful uh, continues here he is the radiance the effulgence I think the author of the says uh, of his glory, the exact representation of his nature. He upholds all things by the word of his power. And when he made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. 
These are awesome verses. Powerful verses. This is our God. And he said, he, when, he, when he came to earth, he made purification. He was a sacrifice for sin uh, in order that we might have a right relationship with God. And then he went back to sit at the right hand of God. Peter, the first day of Pentecost, he says, this Jesus whom you crucified, where is he? He's seated at the right hand mm. of the Father on high. You know? God stepped into humanity. The God we looked at the last couple of weeks, the transcendent God, the God who is unknowable, the God who is so much above everything we can imagine, even imagine or, or, or think about, this God stepped into humanity. And in Jesus we can catch a glimpse of who he is. Mm. Powerful stuff. Mm. That, really powerful. Remember that, line, that third line, when he had purified, puri made, what, what was that? Made purification for sins. The, the, the Greek is much better than that. When he had by the, this is something missed out in the authorised version, when he had by the offering of himself purged our sins. Yes. Not that he simply purged our sins, but the way he did it, by the offering well, of himself. He, he, he became, became what he did. He, he became, he became the, the same the same sin again, for yeah. us. Uh, Paul says, I will dwell in them and walk among them. I will be mm. their God and they shall be my people. Mm. Relationship. That's what he's trying to say. The, the great God Almighty, the Creator, the awesome, the powerful, the omnipotent, the eternal. He wants to be in a relationship with us. He wants us to have a relationship with him. He wants us to call him our, uh, our friend. Uh, the one we can rely on. The one we can lean upon. Uh, and he does that in through Jesus in so many different ways. It's uh, powerful stuff. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You are bought with it. <coughs> oh, I should have I missed that off. I should have put that in there. It's, just, it's in the text. You are not your own. You are bought with a price. price. Yeah. Bought with mm. a price. Mm. Well, the price, what was the price? Mm. The blood of Christ was shed. The bias, mm. the reconcile us to to put things right, to make uh, the mm -hmm. intimate intimacy uh, possible. Uh, <clears throat> like the deepest of human relationships, God wants. Sometimes it's difficult, you know. <coughs> if, you, if your father has been an abusive father, uh, if your father has been not the ideal kind of father, and, and then we start to talk about God as father, sometimes it's difficult for us to see through. What we, what we recognize as, as a norm for fathers uh, and catch a glimpse of the, what a father ought to have been. Uh, and that's the beauty. If we're challenged by God in a right relationship, hopefully we'll, we'll be the best father we can be. We'll be the best wife we can be. We'll be the best children we can be. We'll be challenged to be the best that we can be in every situation. Uh, and that's what God wants for us. Uh, and that's he, he demonstrates a lot. Uh, in every way. The one who joined himself to the Lord is one spirit with him. He wants to be in harmony with us uh, in our lives. Shared experience, shared life. God wants to be whatever we are in every situation. Uh, <clears throat> the writer, again Paul, this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. The two shall become one flesh, one bond together. And then he goes on to say, this is a mystery. It's great. Hmm. I'm speaking about Christ and the church. Mm. What just is like a husband and wife come together and, and are seen as one flesh in the eyes of God. He says, Christ, the head of the church, and you, the body, the church, mm. have to be one unit. What does the head do? Okay. It controls the body. It tells it keep, keeps the body from stumbling, keeps the body from walking the brick walls. <coughs> It guides us, but it's a harmonious thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you get up in the morning, you don't think, I better stop breathing today. The brain's <laughs> it's already doing it. You know, you're already breathing. Uh, I better start listening, switch on my hearing aid. Well, if you're that old, you may have to. 
But in reality, uh, it, it happens naturally. You don't have to say, I need to start healing. I need to open my eyes and start using my... It's all done automatically. There's a harmony mm. in the body. Mm. And, and that's what God wants to be with us. Mm. He wants us to live and walk in harmony, in unity. There's another, there's another thing too. I don't know. Probably we had the same experience, but there were times, Isabel and I, we didn't have to speak. We knew what each other was thinking. Yeah. I, I, it should be like that with us in Christ, I think. It can be a bad thing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it depends what you're thinking. Yeah, that's right. But yeah, and that's you true. shouldn't think those things. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true though, really. really I mean, it is, the, yes. the, the sense of, of, of oneness is there. Yes, yes. And, and, and that's true. You don't, uh, you, or, or quite the other thing happens is you begin to say something, and then uh, I'm just going to say that. Yeah. It's, it's just a, yeah. a, a unity you know in that relationship. Thinking, you have and, to and talk. God says, that's, that's what I'm talking about. He says, I want, I want that bond, I want that relationship. And how difficult is that for us? So often we, we God, you know, we, we put God back in his Bible every night. You know, okay, God, you go up there, and I'll see you in the morning. Ah, you know, that's, that's mm -hmm. terrible, isn't it? And, and there are some days where we get so busy and tied up with stuff, that then we forget God's with us. <coughs> uh, and, and, and we lose sight of that relationship. But that's what he's ultimately, all the way through, he's ultimately doing. He, he, he says, I want you, not just for now. I want you to share in my eternity. Not just on Sundays either. Well, not just on Sundays either. Yeah, that's, it, that's right. Put him in his box. Put him in a matchbox. Bring him out on Sunday. Bring him out on Sunday morning. Bring, yeah, put him back in. So that, and it, and it's, 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 you know, it's getting to that point in our lives to try and recognize that harmony, that relationship aspect, rather than as we normally do, you know, contain God in some sort of mm. box and then, then he's, once he's in the box we can do what we like. Mm. We can bring him out when we fancy it and put him back in when we don't mm. fancy it. Mm. That's, you know, tragic really. Mm. But it's, it's not what he intends. You know, it's a relationship thing. It nice to keep him out all day, but... Every, it nice to keep him out all day. It nice to keep him out. It's, it, it's only totally us, it's limited, isn't it? Mm. You know? Mm. Uh, walking with God. Uh, recognizing that. Galatians says, now that you have come to know God, or rather be known by God, how is it you turn back again to weak and worthless elemental things to which you desire to be enslaved all over again? Mm. Why do we make the same old, same old mistakes? You know, you can imagine, I, I, I think I said once before, God's head must be almost ready to fall off, shaking his head at some of the stuff that we get up to on a regular basis. You know, oh, here we go again. Oh, no, no. He can see the end product. And we are blindly going on and, and, and starting up the mess all over again. Jesus says, I'm a good shepherd. I know my own. My, my own know me. Uh, again, it's an Eastern thing rather than a Western thing. Our, in our country, we usually drive sheep. We use a sheep dog to drive sheep. In Eastern cultures, they walk ahead of the sheep. And they can actually call him by name, and they follow him. Oh, obviously, I mean, if you're like uh, all night sleeping uh, and, and uh, under the stars, a whole bunch of sheep, uh, then obviously you, you build up a relationship with the sheep. You get to know the different sheep, and, and they get to know you. And they know feeding time. They know that you're always there for them and looking after them. And so over a period of time, you, you, you build up this bond. We don't get that in Britain. I mean, it's a totally different culture thing. And it's getting that Eastern culture, and then you put it into this text, or understand this text by that. And Jesus is a good shepherd. Is the shepherd going to want anything bad for his sheep? Is, is he going to want them to be attacked? Is he going to be wanting to starve to death? Is he going to want them to uh, <coughs> be all these different things? And it, it goes, my sheep know my, hear my voice. You know my voice. You know my voice. You know? And they, they respond. And the funny thing is, in, in Eastern cultures, you can actually get two or three uh, herds of sheep actually mingled together. And then at the right time, the, the different three shepherds will, will stand in a different place and say, and they'll separate. They'll, they, they come out of their, their, their different herds and, and separate into their proper herds. And flocks that number of hundreds. Yeah. Not just hundreds. Not just a, not just a half dozen uh, things. They, they literally lose them, will do that. We, we lose. We lose some of the imagery mm -hmm. that Christ is trying to portray, mm -hmm. portray 
because he's, talk, he's talking to people who are there and they understand their culture and we're outside, we're Western culture we don't understand quite often how the, the Arab mind thinks and the other Arab uh, cultures mm. think and that's, uh, we lose something out of that uh, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts crying Abba, Father you're no longer a slave but a son and if you're a son then you're an heir through God all that God has is ours this is my father's world we talk about being good stewards of all that he's given us uh, in TV just quite recently there have been some weird uh, things where odd friendships have been made where there have been lions uh, young lions and, and, and dogs uh, and, and sleeping together uh, a crocodile and a, a, a hippopotamus mm. uh, actually walking through somebody's house and then going back and back into the wild again but, but being treated as, a, as one of the, the things <laughs> all sorts of weird things animals lying down you wouldn't expect to be together because they've been bonding together and, and been together for, for years and, and that made me as I watched that I thought you know I bet Adam was like that. You know, we 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 are so. Matter of fact, in India, some parts of India, uh, because of men's uh, need or want of uh, farming and constantly wanting more and more land, uh, they used to have a, a great relationship with the elephants mm. in this particular area. <laughs> but because they they've been uh, slowly eroding into what was the elephants' land. And because the elements are such big, big beasts, that if they come into your land, they mess things up bad time, big time. Um, they, they kept threatening the elephants. So now, instead of maybe even less, less than 20 years ago, where there was a, a relationship between the man and the elephants, now there's enmity, mm -hmm. and it's, it's demonstrated by the way the elephants react to the humans and the way humans react to them. You know, you can imagine Adam mm -hmm. going back here; he wouldn't have had that problem. Mm -hmm. He would be able to. Pat a lion in the head. There's a woman. There's a woman there. Uh, she actually spends a lot of time with a, a pride of, of uh, I think it's lions, but mainly lions and lionesses. And she's in there all, all uh, on, a, on a big platform, uh, cutting up them all, and she puts, keeps them in their place. And they, they, you know, do all sorts of stuff. Another guy was with hyenas, uh, and, and, and they don't, they, they, they bite them and all sorts of stuff because that's what hyenas do for one another. Mm. But you can imagine Adam was like yeah. that. Yeah. A relationship. Mm. And we've lost all that. Mm. And God wants yeah. to We heard yeah. that song, Give Me a Home Where the Buffalo Roam. Yeah. And I'll show you a dirty house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, on that note. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, but we, we are heirs of God. We'll, we'll close with that one there. Or maybe just, no, we'll leave that one there. Um, we are no longer slaves, though we are slaves of Christ, but we're sons mm. and heirs <coughs> and God wants us to share and God wants us mm. to share eternity with him. Uh, there's a lot of people I wouldn't like to share much with, but God's, <laughs> thankfully God's a lot bigger than I am mm. and uh, he's got a lot better attitude than I have uh, and he, he doesn't see, he doesn't use the prejudice that I have uh, in, in those mm. areas. Okay. We'll hold it there. Frank. Uh, we have no, no questions, right? No, Roger's got a question. Oh, no, I, 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 I,